Well, let's bring in our good friend Frank Isolo, who covers the Knicks for the New York Daily Frank. News. Frank, how do you Gentlemen, think the Knicks are going to do this? Um, I think that's well. They're definitely looking to do something, and they certainly want uh, a point guard. And Shumpert is clearly the guy that could be on the move. But you know, the word is that the Clippers don't want Felton. So, you know, I still think by three o'clock tomorrow the Knicks will do something. I think they believe that they have to do something. But I agree with what you guys are saying. You got to be real careful because, you know, you look at the season right now. You know, could you get into the eighth spot? Can you get into the seventh spot? I, you know, if you can. That's great. What are you get? What are you going to get? Two, three playoff dates out of it, and you know, at the expense of maybe hurting yourself in the future. But you know, the season has been. I mean, I don't think there's any other way to cut it, but it's been a disaster. When you consider, think about this: they're nine games out of first place, which is hard to believe. They're, they have one less loss than the Cleveland Cavaliers. So as bad as the Cavs have been, and I get that they've played a couple more games in the Knicks, but they have more wins, and the Celtics. For rebuilding, only have one less win than the Knicks. That's how bad of a season it's been. How, how does the name Teague ever get brought up? Why would the Knicks ever think about adding $24 million in salary over the next three years? Well, there are people out there that think that he, you know, he's obviously he's not an elite point guard, but they think he's borderline all-star and he's better than what the Knicks have. And, Which is you know, true. Atlanta, I'm, I'm sure Atlanta would, would like to unload that contract, but I think the Knicks have to be smart when it comes to something like that. You know, you don't want to – the idea is – Really for, and I'm sure as it relates to Carmelo, the Knicks have, you know, their plan is to re-sign Carmelo and then hope that next season they could either make some moves with these expiring contracts or wait until the expiring contracts run out. And then you get, um, you know, you can make a run at some of those free agents, Rondo, Kevin Love, who's ever available. But also part of the thing, too, is, you know, Carmelo Anthony might be looking at it like, now you're telling me I might have to wait, you know, until the following summer before we really get someone. And that's why the Knicks are in kind of a, an interesting situation right now. i got to find out the inner workings of Frank Isola. When you heard that Chad Ford report they were interested in Jeremy Lin, what was your reaction? I didn't believe it. Because, uh, you know, Jim Dolan uh, was very unhappy with uh, Jeremy Lin, and maybe you guys have heard this, but, you know, Jim Dolan could be somewhat uh, vindictive. Sure. And I cannot believe that Jim Dolan would acknowledge that he made a mistake by getting rid of Jeremy Lin. And also, wasn't the issue kind of Mike Woodson, um, Carmelo Anthony, J.R. Smith, they weren't that thrilled with uh, Jeremy Lin, and aren't those guys still, like, a part of the team? So I don't... I don't, I, I don't believe it. I'm not saying his report is wrong, but I, I have a hard time uh, believing that. Well, well, you know how it works, so I'm just wondering... Are there people within that organization that want to see it happen? We know Jim Dolan doesn't want it to happen, which means it won't happen. But do you think that there are scouts and people within the inner workings of that organization that believe that Lynn would help? I'm sure, I'm sure that there are some people that do. But, you know, he is, he is a backup right now in Houston, and he's in a pretty good situation in Houston. I'm sure Houston's looking at probably move him because he's a backup. I remember the big deals with that back end of the contract when, he, when he's going to make all that money. But, you know, and obviously that financial obligation would not be a big deal uh, to the Knicks. But, you know, him coming off the bench in Houston, you have him and Omir Ashik. You know, that's pretty good. There's not a lot of teams that start guys like Jeremy Lin and Omir Ashik, and Houston has them coming off the bench. But I just, like I said, I have a, a hard time really believing uh, that the Knicks would do something like that. All right. Now, the biggest concern for the Knicks as they try to implement this plan, which we don't know what it is yet, is that Carmelo has to be part of that plan. So let me ask you this, Frank. Is there a chance that he goes anywhere else other than the Knicks? I, I definitely think there is. I think, um, you know, Dwight Howard uh, last year, now Dwight Howard still got $87 million to go to the Houston Rockets, but he did leave the Lakers, a big market team uh, with all that tradition, and they could have all, they were going to offer him $30 million more. He took less. LeBron took less to go to uh, Miami. So did Chris Bosh, by the way. And, you know, it's your Carmelo. Now think about it. Like somebody was saying this down in uh, – uh, New in Orleans. New Orleans during the All-Star game, that if all those guys opted out, LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, and they all signed for $14 million, then Carmelo could sign for $14 million and they all could be together in Miami. I know, like, you know, people are going to say that's crazy that they would do that. I remember, you know, being at Game 6 between Cleveland and Boston when LeBron had that horrible, uh, actually it was Game 5, when LeBron basically shut it down and he wasn't, you know, playing and something seemed to be wrong with him. And after the game, I was walking down to the court, and I ran into Charles Oakley, who's an Ohio guy. And when I walked up to him, I said, what do you think? What's going on? He said, he's leaving. I said, really? He goes, yeah, he's going to either Miami or Chicago. And I remember thinking, he's not going to Miami. And if you, then if you also remember, you know, like a week, you know, sometime in late June, you know, Stephen A. Smith came on your station, and he was reporting that he had heard that the three of those guys were going to get together. And I remember thinking at the time, man, I thought, that just doesn't sound right that the three of those guys would do that because it really wasn't something that we were used to with, with players doing that. 
And now go back to this November when, you know, Carmelo's being interviewed on NBA TV by uh, Ahmad Rashad, and when he was asked about LeBron, he kept talking about, oh, he did that was a smart thing he did. It was a smart thing. And even this weekend in New Orleans, I mean, I know there's a couple of ways to take it, but he did say he would take less money. And I think he's meaning, yeah, I mean, you know, he would take less money from the Knicks if, if, if it would help them out. I still find it hard to believe. But if he's willing to take less money, doesn't that mean he's willing to go someplace else? He, the Knicks have 20 wins. That's, there's no other way around it. If he, if he really is that... Uh, obsessed with winning, and he says that he is, and he's got a ton of money, and he said, I'm going to get paid no matter where I go. If he went to a place like Miami, is he putting himself in the best position to win a championship? I'd have to say he is. Okay, but, I mean, there's a couple of things here. $14 million a year, so he's going to take 56 over 4 rather than 130 over 5. He must really love winning. And the second ah. thing is, the last time uh, I, I heard LeBron talk, he said, this time I am not taking any discount when I become a free agent. I'm going to get the top money I can make. So you mean that LeBron... Bosch and Wade are all going to take $14 million so that Carmelo could join them? Do, uh, do, I th- do I think that's going to happen? I would say it's a, it's a slim possibility, but I do think it's a possibility. I mean, if, if you add Carmelo to that mix, that could put them in a position where they could keep winning champions because the bottom line is LeBron, no matter who he plays with, he's going to make better, and you put him with somebody uh, like Carmelo. Listen, Mike, if you're asking me what do I think is going to happen, I still think Carmelo is going to take the money in New York and he's going to get the max deal. 